Well, phooey. It's snowing again. Do you all know how hard it is to even try to have a garden when it's below freezing and it's snowing? This darn weather is just never ending this year. <laughs> it's a delayed April Fool's joke. <laughs> Howdy everybody, Dave here with Nelson Craig Farms. It is Monday the 8th of April 2024. It is the day of the solar eclipse. I doubt however very much that you're going to see it here in this state. But if you live in North Carolina, your chances of seeing a near full solar eclipse are pretty good. And speaking of North Carolina, I had to make a phone call this morning to Elvis over at Old Red Tractors. It was a phone call I was not wanting to make. But right now my hands are tied and I don't have much of a choice. And I'm sure I have disappointed him because he's been busting his tuchus trying to get things ready for my visit. And... I quite honestly wanted to see him and his family in his place and do the uh, Got to Be North Carolina Festival. <sighs> Unfortunately, as things go, it ain't going to happen this year. So if any of you were looking forward to seeing me and Elvis there at the show coming up in May, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be able to make it. Despite it being sunny right at the minute, I'm going to go inside out of this blooming wind that we have here in Idaho, get warmed up for a little bit. But first, I'm going to show you something that I discovered on my way back home from town this morning when I went to town to go get groceries. For quite some time now, I've noticed that my overflow tank for the radiator in my little pickup has been draining down and becoming lower and lower and I could smell hot antifreeze well I finally located it I don't know if you can see it but right there is a crack in the tank and it's bubbling antifreeze out of it so yeah I need to get a new one of these little tanks and install and another thing that needs to be fixed is I need to replace the alternator in this little truck Every once in a while when it gets really super cold out, it develops one heck of a squeal. So I'm sure there's a bearing gone in it somewhere. So yeah, that'll be another project to pull apart and yet to fix. I'm fairly certain it is the alternator because it has a built-in voltage regulator and whatever it's doing is causing all the battery acids to boil out of the batteries. In fact, I've already ruined a set of cables on this pickup because of this thing going on here. I mean, look at that. That's just blistered and boiled up everywhere. I discovered that leaky overflow tank after I got home. From doing a little grocery shopping this morning, I could smell hot antifreeze, so I thought, well, I better check it again, see if I can spot it. Popped the hood up, and there was that tank leaking. I go to pack my groceries into the house, my refrigerator has died. The water all over the floor from where to defrost it, it won't start up, it won't run, it won't get cold, won't get, don't won't do anything. Light will come on, but that's it. So everything in the freezer is melting. The stuff in the lower part has probably gone bad. And here I have a couple hundred bucks worth of groceries. It's the last me a couple of weeks. Know where to put it. So I've crammed them into a ice chest, cooler, pair of them that I have. 
took what ice I could scrounge up, dumped in there, and went back to town with a truck with a leaky radiator overflow tank to get some bags of ice to dump in there. So, yeah, now I got to go back to town again, grab a new refrigerator. So, sounds like Elvis, speaking of him, yeah, he's having issues too. He had to buy a new appliance himself last night. So, must be something going around because of the solar eclipse thing. If I recall back to one of my previous videos where I went down here into the well pit to turn on water for the hydrants around the farm, I made the note that the concrete was breaking away and starting to act like it was going to cave in. Down here there's a big concrete box underneath this concrete lid on top of which I'm standing. Tree roots from the uh, willow tree that was here, pine trees behind where you're at, and this one over here, over time, are pushing up against that concrete and breaking it. And it appears that when they made the thing, they didn't use any rebar to help hold it together or anything at all. So it's just poured concrete. So there's not much structure to it to hold it together. Now when I went in several days ago to pick up the small irrigation pump for here at the farm from my local pump repair company, a longtime family friend by the name of Brent who works there, well, he and his father were the ones that converted this well from a jack shaft type pump with a sucker rod and all that that went up and down to pump water to a below water level electric pump. That is nearly 50 some years ago. Well, Brent's still employed at that pump place and he happened to see the video that I had done of the wall and he stopped by, took a look at it the other day while I was at the in-town job. Gives me a call. Dave, you really need to do something with that and darn quick before it starts caving in because if it caves in, It'll take out your controller for the pump. It'll take out all the wiring for the pump. It'll take out the pressure tank. It'll take out the pressure switch and all of the related plumbing and et cetera, so forth. So his recommendation is we pull this wood cover that I've got my foot on off. We pull the pump out. We put in a well casing and we do a pitless style pump system here. We relocate the pressure tank, the control valve, and all that stuff into the basement of the house, which is going to take re wiring and replumbing and a bunch of other things. So, yeah. If I'd have known I was going to be facing this expense before I bought some of the implements that I've mentioned that haven't gotten here yet, I would have held off on buying those and fixed this. Because I got to have water for the house to do laundry, to drink, for whatever. So, yeah, this is going to be a major project that I'm going to have to tackle this year because I haven't got any choice. Yeah, while all this has been going on and the foul weather that we had with all the snow, the pellet stove that I heat my house with decided to take a dump on me it's not working so i get a hold of comfort build again they are hiring a technician to come out and take a look at it find out what's going on with it and we'll go from there uh, i've tinkered with it myself i put that spare motherboard in it put in new fuses changed out the igniter yeah so do i recommend comfort built pellet stoves nope not at all uh, am I going to get something different? We'll see if this guy can find it and fix it. I can't imagine it's anything major. I imagine it's something probably pretty stupid. But let me tell you, when the overnight lows were down into the upper 20s, it got darn cold in that house, even with four of those little space heaters running. Now, Saturday in the mail, I got a thing from the uh, Idaho Department of Motor Vehicles telling me that my driver's license needs to be renewed. Well, I can go online and renew it, but I don't have that enhanced card or the star card as they're called. And if I'm going to take my early retirement in a few years, 
I'm going to have to have that so I can get into the Social Security building to take care of me getting on Social Security in about three years. Yeah. Fortunately, this year I did not need that info yet. They pushed it back to 2025 for me to fly domestically. So I was going to fly back and see everybody in North Carolina. Well, that just isn't going to happen. So... I still got to go ahead and pay the state of Idaho for all the information that they already have to give it back to them so I can pay them to have a driver's license. You see the theme there? Yeah, it's a money grab thing putting that stupid star on your driver's license card. It's nothing. It's just a way for the state and the federal government, something they've come up with, to take your tax dollar and mine. Now the real kicker that has popped up that I got an email on the other day is from Phil McGrain, or McGran, Idaho Secretary of State. Yeah, this thing right here. State seal on it the whole nine yards. It is in reference to the Corporate Transparency Act. Yeah, another thing the damn Democrats have come up with to get your money. It says, attention Idaho business entities. Beginning on January 1st, 2024, many companies in the United States will have to report information about their beneficial owners, i.e. the individuals who ultimately own or control the company. Businesses must report the information to the federal government financial crimes enforcement network, the FinCEN, it happens to be a Bureau of the Department of Treasury. The Corporate Transparency Act is a federal law enacted by the U.S. Congress, which is controlled by the Democrats. To determine if your business is required to file this information, please visit the website, and it gives you the address. And then it has annual report filing requirements, etc., so forth and so on. Well, years ago, I filed the farm as a business, or as a business doing business in the state of Idaho, thinking that it was going to do the fresh produce thing and sell produce and whatnot out of a roadside stand. Well, I don't know that that's going to happen, honestly, folks, because I'm going to call the Secretary of State's office, find out what the deal is on that. And I'll probably have to unregister Nelson Creek Farms as a business, doing business, in the state of Idaho uh, to keep me out of trouble. Because if you get to read in the fine print on this, you can be facing a $10,000 fine per day or whatever it is and or jail time. So, yeah, i got to get this taken care of. So... Yeah, always something I got to deal with. And the government's not making it any easier to do business. Darn shame. Now, let's talk a little bit about not being able to do business with somebody. As you well know, I have terminated my business dealings of 30-some years plus with the local bank here in town. Or it's just a branch of, but it's the same bank that I've been dealing with for 30 years plus. They're still jerking me around on trying to attempt to get me a loan for the egg implements that I've already paid for via a loan through another bank. Long story short, the first bank I went to Set everything up with the lady. She said, we'll have to run a credit report. No big deal, yada, yada. Filled out all the paperwork, sent it in. She disappeared, as I think I mentioned. Well, everybody that touched it at that bank, at the branch or at the corporate office or wherever, every single one of them ran a credit report. So you know what that does to your credit score. <laughs> so when I went in two weeks ago, this last Friday talked to the nice folks at the new bank they said yeah sure no problem 
make your payments on that uh, loan for at least a year, your credit score will go right back up. Because I was originally just going to have them issue a cashier checks for every piece of equipment that I was going to buy. And they said, no, 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 no. We'll help you rebuild your credit. You get a loan from us, even though it's, you can write a check for this stuff. Get a loan from us. Make payments on it for at least a year, and your credit score will go right back up again. So, yay. I got a letter the other day from the First Bank still wanting more information. They're still yanking me around trying to get me to do business with them. Well, evidently they haven't realized I've gone in and closed all my accounts. <laughs> yeah, took all my money out and closed them up. Now, speaking of closing, and nobody willing to play ball. I went to, yet again, another insurance company to talk to them about getting some liability insurance just on the farm and some of the new equipment that I'm getting. With the option of picking up insurance for the corn maze and pumpkin patch. Well, I all of a sudden get a text message from the guy at the insurance company wanting to come out, pay a visit to my home, to look over the house, the barn, the garage, the shop, the shed, take pictures of all the above so he can send it in to their underwriters. So I, whoa, time out, thought about it overnight a little bit, sent him back a nice little email the next morning, not a text message, but an email stating that I was not asking for homeowner's insurance. I did not want the home, the garage, etc. covered. I just wanted some liability insurance to prevent me from losing everything should somebody step in a go for whole twist and ankle, that sort of thing, get a cut from a ear of corn because the leaves on a corn stalk can be very sharp and cut quickly and didn't want anybody tripping over vines of the pumpkins. So, yeah, now they're trying to get me to insure car, home, whatever, on that policy. Uh, yeah, if they're not going to play ball with me, I'm not going to fool with them. Uh, I'm not going to waste any more of my time dealing with people that can't deal with what I'm looking for and wanting to do. Um, I, I don't have the time to deal with it. I've lost my patience. My patience has been fried from dealing with retail customers, let me tell you. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just burned out and done. So either they learn to play ball with me or they're out. That's just it. Uh, I'll pull that Donald Trump thing again and you're fired. But you know what? Today wasn't all bad news. Yeah, I happened to uh, get another uh, seed catalog in the mail today. So, yeah, I'm going to sit down this afternoon and see what I can't live without. Because if I don't hear back from the insurance agent, I won't need to be buying a whole bunch of sweet corn to plant the corn maize. So, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. But one way or the other, we will have a garden plot out here. Because, by golly, I'm looking to have some watermelon growing this year. Yeah, I do kind of like that watery fruit. So it's supposed to be good in antioxidants and cancer fighting stuff. So I'll eat me a bunch of watermelon this year, if nothing else. Maybe I can lose a few pounds. That's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you all for watching. To you new subscribers, please bear with us. As soon as the weather gets better, we'll be out in the field working with antique equipment, antique tractors, Everything from ADN Forge to Farm All H's, you name it, Alice Chalmers. So we will get there, but just not today. And for Penny, you don't have to worry about getting Elvis Snipe bail money because I'm not going to be able to make it to North Carolina this year. So anyway, thanks again for watching. And for those of you that are watching and following along that haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate it. Just right down there, all you got to do is click on that big red thing with the white letters that says subscribe on it. I'd like to see if we can hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. I'd really love it if we could do it by July 1st, but apparently I don't have the content to attract a whole bunch of new viewers, so or some such thing, either that or YouTube screwing with the algorithms again. Anyway, 
I'm Farmer Dave. I'm trying to keep my chin up and my nose above water. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye for now.